Hello everyone, it's Mrs Harrison here again with another story. Today I am reading Burglar Bill, which is an absolute classic. I'm sure almost all of you will have either read this or had it read to you before. Um, but in the interest of classics, I'm carrying on with all of my childhood favourites. So, Burglar Bill. Burglar Bill lives by himself in a tall house full of stolen property. Every night he has stolen fish and chips and a cup of stolen tea for supper. Then he swings a big stolen sack over his shoulder and goes off to work, stealing things. Every morning, Burglar Bill comes home from work and has stolen toast and marmalade and a cup of stolen coffee for breakfast. Then he goes upstairs and sleeps all day in a comfortable stolen bed. One night, Burglar Bill is working in a little street behind the police station. When he comes to the first house, he climbs in through the bathroom window and shines his torch around. That's a nice toothbrush, says Burglar Bill. I'll have that. And he puts it into his sack. When he comes to the second house, he climbs in through the kitchen window and shines his torch around. Oh, that's a nice tin of beans, said Burglar Bill. I'll have that. And he puts it into his sack. When he comes to the third house, he climbs in through the bedroom window and shines his torch around. That's nice. Hat and coat and pair of trousers and socks and shoes, says Burglar Bill. I'll have them. And he puts them into his sack. You can get the idea here. When he comes to the 16th house, he stops. There, on the front step, is a big brown box with little holes in it. That's a nice big brown box with little holes in it said Burglar Bill. I'll have that. In the distance, the town hall clock strikes five. Time to stop work, said Burglar Bill. He swings the sack over his shoulder, picks up the box and goes home to have breakfast. After breakfast, Burglar Bill plays with his cat by the fire. Suddenly, he hears a noise. Sounds like a police car, said Burglar Bill. But the noise is coming from the big brown box and it's getting louder. Sounds like two police cars, said Burglar Bill. He creeps up to the box and raises the lid. Blow me down, he says. It ain't no police cars. It's a baby. Burglar Bill puts the baby on the table. What was you doing in that box, baby? He says, but the baby only keeps on crying. All alone, says Burglar Bill. And he pats the baby's little hand. An orphan! But the baby only keeps on crying. Then Burglar Bill says, I know what you want. Grub! Burglar Bill gives an apple to the baby. But still the baby cries. He gives a slice of toast and marmalade to the baby. But still the baby cries. He gives a plate of beans and a cup of tea to the baby. The baby eats the beans throws the cup of tea on the floor and starts to laugh. That's better, said Burglar Bill. I like a few beans myself. Burglar Bill sits by the fire and wonders what to do. The baby is crying again. He gives the baby a football to play with. The baby throws a football at the cat and keeps on crying. He gives the baby a book to look at. The baby bites a hole in the book and keeps on crying. He sings a song and plays the piano to the baby. The baby cries louder than ever. He falls off the piano stool and bangs his nose on the floor. And the baby laughs and shouts, Again! Again? said Burglar Bill as he rubs his nose. I didn't want to do it the first time. And you can see on that picture there, for he's a jolly good fellow. I like the fact that Burglar Bill can play the piano, but the cat doesn't look too impressed either. The cat's pulling a bit of a stressed out face. Maybe he's not very good at playing the piano. The baby didn't seem to like it. Burglar Bill bounces the baby on his knee. So, you can talk, he says. Say Burglar Bill. Burglar Bill, says the baby. Say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper, said Burglar Bill. Burglar Bill, says the baby. Suddenly, Burglar Bill feels his knee getting wet and smells a smell. Poo, he says. I know what you want. Poo, says the baby. Burglar Bill changes the baby's nappy. He doesn't have another one, so he uses an old bath towel instead. Say, 
for he's a jolly good fellow for changing my nappy, says Burglar Bill. Burglar Bill plays with the baby and shows it around the house. He feeds it again, changes its nappy again, washes its clothes and hangs them out on the line in the kitchen. Now I like this picture because he looks quite happy. He's not doing what he was doing before, sleeping all day and burgling all night. He's doing lots of house chores there. When night comes, he takes the baby for a walk in the park. Say, run for it, if you see anybody coming, says Burglar Bill. Run for it, the baby says. At 12 o'clock, Burglar Bill comes home, puts the baby to bed and goes to bed himself. Soon, he's snoring softly and dreaming of his own childhood days. Suddenly, he wakes up. Downstairs, there is a noise. Is a noise that Burglar Bill has heard before. The noise of someone opening a window and climbing carefully in. Blow me down, said Burglar Bill. I'm being burgled. Burglar Bill creeps to the top of the stairs. Down below, a torch is shining and a voice says, That's a nice umbrella. I'll have that. Burglar Bill creeps down the stairs and the voice says, That's a nice tin of beans. I'll have that. Burglar Bill creeps along the hall and into the kitchen and the voice says, That's a nice date and walnut cake with buttercream filling and icing on the top. I'll have that. Burglar Bill puts on the light. There, with a black mask over her eyes and her hand in the bread bin, stands a lady. Who are you? says Burglar Bill. I'm Burglar Betty says the lady. Who are you? Burglar Bill puts on his own mask. Oh, says Burglar Betty. I know you. It's Burglar Bill. I've seen your picture up in a police gazette. Then she says, look here, I'm ever so sorry breaking in like this. If I'd have known. Don't mention it, said Burglar Bill. He holds out his hand. Pleased to meet you. Likewise, I'm sure, Burglar Betty says. Burglar Bill makes a jug of cocoa and opens a packet of ginger biscuits. The two burglars sit round the kitchen table. You married Bill? says Burglar Betty. No, says Burglar Bill. The right woman never come along. He offers the biscuits to Burglar Betty. She takes one and dips it into her cocoa. Oh, no, I wondered, she said, seeing these baby things. Oh, I've got a baby says Burglar Bill. Found it on a doorstep in a box. In a box? said Burglar Betty. That's right, said Burglar Bill. A big brown box with little holes in it. A big brown box with little holes in it? said Burglar Betty. That's right, said Burglar Bill. Well, blow me down, says Burglar Betty. That baby's mine. The two burglars hurry upstairs to the baby's room. That's him, said Burglar Betty. And she swings the baby in the air. You see, he's got this little birthmark on his leg. And these are his own little clothes as well, what his grandma knit him. Oh, my baby looks very happy to see his mum. Back in the kitchen, Burglar Bill makes a fresh jug of cocoa and opens a packet of arrowroot biscuits. Meanwhile, Burglar Betty tells him how she lost the baby. You see, I just left him on the doorstep for a minute while I was burgling the house. And when I come out, he was gone. I thought the police had got him. I only thought he was a useful sort of box, says Burglar Bill. I never knew there was a baby in there till I got it home. Burglar Betty gets ready to leave. I suppose your husband will be glad to see you when you get back, says Burglar Bill. No, he won't, said Burglar Betty. I ain't got no husband, she dabs a little hanky to her eyes. You see, I'm a widow lady, which means her husband's not alive anymore. Burglar Bill walks through the town with Burglar Betty and the baby. You know Betty, he says, getting burgled like that gave me a fright. I know what you mean, says Burglar Betty. Losing my baby like that gave me a fright. I can see the error of my ways, says Burglar Bill. I've been a bad man. Me too, says Burglar Betty. I've been a bad woman. I've been a terrible woman. Just then, the baby starts to cry. Shh, says Burglar Betty. You'll have the police after us. Burglar Bill looks over his shoulder. From now on, I'm going to lead an honest life, he says. 
and all them things I've pinched. All them things I've pinched as well, says Burglar Betty. All them things, says Burglar Bill. Mine and yours, Betty. We're going to take them back. Now, this is one of those pages where you really need to have the book um, to be able to look at the pictures clearly, but you can see she's taking back loads of stuff to this house. A hat, a toothbrush, which is a bit gross to have stolen, some fish, a bedpan, which is gross as well, an umbrella, a policeman's hat, oh, some ornamental stuffed fish, a piano, that's going back into a pub called the Red Cow. So, Burglar Bill stops being a burglar and, after a time, starts working as a bread man in the local bakery. Burglar Betty stops being a burglar as well. When spring comes, she sells her house and gives the money to the Police Benevolent Fund. Then she gets married to Burglar Bill. Outside the church, Bill stands with a baby in his arms. Say, Bakery Bill, he says. Bakery Bill, says the baby. Say, for he's a jolly good fellow for marrying my mum, said Bill. Say, for she's a jolly good fellow for marrying him, Betty says. In the distance, the town hall clock strikes four. Bill, Betty and the baby leave the church, walk down the little street behind the police station and go home to have their tea. Now, on the last page, you can see a picture of Burglar Bill there as a baker. There he is, look. Which is, mu it suits him much more. He looks much more friendly as a baker because burglars can be quite scary when you're a child. Um, and I think that's a classic story. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm sorry for my funny voices there. I didn't keep them constant throughout, but it's quite difficult. I'll see you again tomorrow for another story. Have a good evening. Take care.